Hello and welcome to the second episode of VRTV. My name is Zena. With me today is Julian Davis, CTO of 360 Degree and VR video production company Focal Point. Also joining me is Sylvan Cornillan of Bossa Studios, creators of one of the most slapstick video games there is, Surgeon Simulator ER. But before any of that, first there's a news roundup and I will also be announcing the winner of the HP Envy laptop giveaway. HTC has revealed that over 15,000 Vive units were sold within the first 10 minutes of pre-orders going live. In celebration of this, Palmer Lucky of Oculus VR took to Twitter to congratulate his rivals. Due to the high demand of the HMD, shipping has been backdated till May and first orders will be going out next month. So if you're pre-ordering your Vive now, you'll have to wait a little bit longer to get your hands on it. With all of the excitement of the HTC Vive release, Alienware and MSI have both revealed their lineup of Vive ready PCs and laptops. Alienware is offering spec heavy PCs with prices ranging from $1,700 to $3,900 US dollars. MSI is offering a more portable solution to VR video gaming with their list of five notebook models. And finally, McDonald's continues to fight against your mother's words of advice from not to eat so much junk food to stop sitting so close to the screen with its very own Happy Meal Google Cardboard headset dubbed the Happy Goggles. The headset is only currently available in Sweden this weekend and is undergoing a trial run. McDonald's also has its very own VR video game called Slope Stars, which you can check out on your Happy Goggles. For more on any of these stories, check out VRFocus.com. It's now time for the announcement of the HP NV laptop giveaway winner. Many of you flocked to the comments, but only one of you can win this prize courtesy of AMD. Congratulations to you, Sean Lumley. Make sure you make yourself reachable so we can send the laptop straight over to you. As for the rest of you, stay with VRTV for another great giveaway at the end of this episode. Joining me now is my first guest, Julian Davis, CTO of Focal Point, who will be telling me about his progressive projects in VR film production. I would like to welcome our first guest today, CTO of Focal Point VR, Julian Davis. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you very much. So Focal Point VR is a VR video production company. I guess we're probably a VR te video technology company and we happen to be doing quite a lot of production at the moment because we're still learning a lot. So where did you start out from? We're all from the games industry, uh, though one of us is a video guy. And uh, about a year ago, we started working on the idea that an exciting place to be would be VR, and particularly that there was going to be a great growth in consuming kind of VR experiences like sporting events and theatre and that kind of thing. And we just decided that's where we wanted to be. And so we put the company together and we've been learning and building technology ever since. So learning with the technology, what, what types of technology are you working with? It starts off with the cameras. Um, last year there were very few cameras on the market, so we were basically built, putting together um, 3D printed rigs uh, using GoPro cameras. And then this year there's going to be a lot of custom cameras, so we'll be moving over to working to those. So was there to a certain extent a kind of feel of trial and error in terms of finding the right cameras and the right types of equipment? Yeah, absolutely everything. I mean. Uh, it's a new space, there's no right answers for everything. So you're constantly having to try things and see what works and then you find something that half works and you work with that until you find something better. As if that wasn't a challenge enough, uh, your next biggest project is 360 live streaming. I mean, we've actually, we've already 
demonstrated this. Uh, in fact, I was doing this last year. But uh, there are even more challenges with live streaming because suddenly all of that production you were doing to process the video and those things, they've got to be done in real time. And then you've also got to try and minimize the time between the moment you caught the video to the moment that it appears on the headset. And a lot of the stuff we want to capture is in places where I can't just plug into a LAN connection and upload it to the internet. I've got to use a you know, mobile phone and upstreaming all this massive amount of content on a mobile phone is pretty challenging. So what types of events and what types of things would you be filming for? The one that I got most excited about recently was uh, the idea of having, uh, being able to go back to attending gigs. So, uh, you know, typical scenario, when you're in your 20s, you go to a lot of live gigs, you have a lot of fun going to the bar or whatever, and then kids come along and kind of bits of a cramp on your lifestyle. So, uh, wouldn't it be great if you could stick a VR headset on, pick up a couple of motion controllers, have this, your partner do the same thing, pop into some live gig that's going on right now, surrounded by a crowd and just dancing. And, you know, being able to see your friend there and talk to them over the noise of music. Uh, and that's the kind of live experience that we would want to get, a really kind of intimate for you and whoever you're with, shared experience, but also at some great big public event. So a large aspect of this is the social aspect. Absolutely. I, I, I'm, I'm a complete believer in these live VR experiences, but nobody wants to just sit on their own in a crowd and feel lonely, right? You want to be there with your friends and do these things together. And that means finding ways to give you that experience. Uh, what kinds of things have you lined up for 2016? We're talking to quite a lot of TV companies at the moment, actually, um, where they are interested in having some TV show have some sort of companion experience where you can get, you know, maybe they're recording, they're, they're transmitting something live on 2D, but then they'll also transmit some part of the experience uh, as, a, as a VR experience. With things like the Google you know, Cardboard, which is so cheap, it's actually pretty easy for a TV company to add that content, make it available, and then people to be able to consume it in large numbers. You know, we're videoing rock climbing experiences, we're videoing theme parks. So you say that you've been to theme parks and so on. What, what is the biggest project that you've worked on? That's probably actually right now, that is probably the, the biggest project. The, the theme park, in terms of, I mean, it's actually turned out to be one of the harder things to capture just because of making a safe rig that can get onto the, um, to the big roller coaster. And these are pretty complex pieces, so making sure that all of that stays on, that you get the good view, that's all been... Doesn't uh, fly kind off of halfway through. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's a serious issue. Five years from now, how do you see this really forming? I must admit, as a personal view, uh, I would uh, say that video is probably going to be bigger than games. Though games are going to be huge this year, and I think it's going to be a fantastic driver. The video space, and particularly that, you know, being there at events that you can't otherwise get to, um, I think it's really exciting, and I can see that really driving the market. So five years out, I guess what I'm hoping for is, you know, that the experience are much more real. Fantastic! Thank you so much for. Very welcome. Us. Up next, we have got the CTO of Bossa Studios, Sylvan Connellan. He will be talking about the VR adaptation of perhaps one of the most slapstick video games there is, Surgeon Simulator. Welcome to Mars. Urgent surgery required on patient number 497. I'm now joined by Sylvan Cornillon from Bossa Studios. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, so Bossa Studios has a more than respectable catalogue of video games. How was it getting into VR? That was um, a very natural thing. As soon as the um, Oculus released the, uh, the DK1 pre-orders, um, multiple members of the team and the company just uh, supported the Kickstarter and as soon as we received the kit um, our developer on Surgeon uh, integrated it right away uh, and and we had something working very very quickly we were actually one of the first uh, commercially available game that had a v uh, VR support. With Surgeon Simulator experience reality what was the motive behind taking Surgeon Simulator a very successful game a very fun game and making it into a VR version. One of the 
interesting aspect of, of Surgeon has always been the difficulty with the controls and, and the, the challenge with the controls. Uh, with the, uh, the new uh, motion controllers, we thought we had to rethink the, the, the control again after the iOS versions. We had to also do a, a rethink of the controls. That pushed us into redesigning a lot of, of the game itself. So the experience is still the same, but it's a more direct experience with the touch controllers or the motion controllers. So were you worried with the use of motion controls that you'd lose the fun aspect of the game? Surgeon Simulator is more about the, th the theme and the humour of the game itself actually. There's still some challenge with the controllers. First because it's, you know, more, it's physics based and so you still have things flying around, uh, especially when you're in zero G and it's flying across your face. So that humour is still there. The control is more direct and the experience is more intuitive, but actually it makes the experience more, more, more accessible for a lot of people. How easy was it to adapt the game to VR in terms of the motion controllers? I understand that there was difficulty in terms of calibration. When you go in VR, one of the things you bring that you don't bring in a normal VR game is you bring yourself, you bring your height, you bring your height, uh, position, you bring your, your arm length. So one of the things we had to do in the first version, we had the arm actually fully in the game. We had to remove that because it, it wouldn't work depending on people's arm lengths. The height thing, we had to kind of set it up at a height that's acceptable for everybody. Uh, and there might be some option to, to calibrate that. It's very different. We're discovering all of that and the language and what's acceptable for users around these settings is, is still to be discovered uh, until you know it gets as a first um, users by the by the software and the hardware. Is this more of a novelty type of project for you or do you see yourself moving forward with VR? It's a learning experience. It's We're building, we've always been interested. We have the VR meetups in, in, in London where we have a lot of developers sharing experience. Uh, and so it's a very important subject for us. Uh, but Surgeon ER is a, is a full product. It's going to be a quality product, but it, it is a learning experience that we're not going full-blown uh, VR uh, just yet. We still have uh, other projects that are not VR, like Worlds Adrift. But um, it's definitely a learning experience and producing a good quality game for people to enjoy. Fantastic. Thank you so much for giving your time to come speak with us on VR TV. And thank you once again, Jules. Stick with us for another chance for a great giveaway here at VR TV. It's that time of the show where you guys get to win something pretty cool from us for absolutely nothing. This episode's prizes are four separate Steam codes for Oculus Rift launch title, Albino Lullaby. That's right, four of you will be able to win this prize. This time, all you need to do is either comment below or tweet me at XenaVRFocus telling me if you've pre-ordered an HMD and why you chose that one. Best of luck and I'll catch you next time.